These are the violations of civil and constitutional rights and crimes committed by family court judges. Denial of the First Amendment, freedoms of religion and speech. Parents cannot train up their children according to their beliefs when stripped of parental authority. Two, denial of First Amendment right to petition for redress of grievances. Parents are denied justice in family courts. Their petitions are denied or dismissed. Kidnapping. State family court judges steal children from fit, law-abiding parents perpetuating custody battles. Denial of the Fourth Amendment right to privacy. Unsubstantiated accusations result in invasion of homes and stealing of children by police or child protective services without probable cause. Judges routinely order psyche evals which invade and probe every detail of private family life of law-abiding parents. Parties who come to court to address legal issues are diverted into a wilderness of psychological evaluations because judges refuse to do their job to enforce the constitutional right to parent further draining family assets. Denial of Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment rights to due process of law. These include denial of the right to free counsel for poor defendants, denial of the right to take depositions, lack of evidentiary hearings, lack of notice, an improper standard of proof, with defendants being presumed guilty and being sentenced like criminals to loss of the fundamental constitutional right to be a parent. Denial of the Sixth Amendment right to a speedy public trial. Temporary pendente light orders in secretive unrecorded hearings usually become permanent orders. Justice delayed is justice denied. Fathers are treated as guilty in either or both criminal and civil court upon mere accusation and are in effect sentenced to loss of the fundamental right to parenthood in civil court even if criminal cases are dismissed. Denial of the Seventh Amendment right to trial by jury. Heartless, treasonous judges make decisions to sever loving parent-child relationships which no jury would allow, which perpetuates continual litigation and profits for the divorce industry. Denial of 13th Amendment prohibition against slavery and involuntary servitude. Usually fathers some mothers are enslaved as non-custodial parents and forced to pay extortion, so-called child support, or risk being thrown into debtor's prison. False imprisonment. Fathers are typically arrested first in domestic disputes upon mere accusation. Usually fathers are thrown into debtor's prisons when they do not or are unable to comply with the illegal extortion, so-called child support orders. Denial of 14th Amendment right to equal protection of the laws. Mothers initiate most divorces and are awarded sole custody in the vast majority of contested cases, even though both parents are equally fit and loving parents resulting in state-sanctioned gender discrimination and child abuse, stealing one half of the child's world. Statistics are still about between 80 and 90 percent of custody awards going to mothers. Denial of 14th Amendment liberty interest in the family. Numerous U.S. Supreme Court rulings have well, have well established the fundamental liberty interest in the family and the constitutional right to be a parent. Yet, treasonous state family court judges daily and routinely ignore and violate the U.S. Constitution and their own state constitutions and violate their oath of office to uphold, to uphold those constitutions. Fraud upon courts. Judges and lawyers of the multi-billion dollar divorce industry increase the amount of custody and family law litigation in contradiction of its alleged purpose to strengthen and preserve families. 
by trampling on the rights of U.S. citizens. Why do they do it? Crooked judges who violate their oath to follow the Constitution and the fact that Congress incentivizes destruction of families with acts such as CAPTA, the Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, 1974, VAWA, the Violence Against Women Act, 1994, ASVA, the Adoption and Safe Families Act, 1997, Title IV and or other titles of the Social Security Act concerning family issues, for all of which Congress had no delegated power to act. These are areas reserved to the states under Amendments 9 and 10 of the U.S. Constitution.